Hello friends, so today's video is going to be a come manga shopping with me. If you have come to this channel through my main channel, then you likely have heard me talk quite a bit about my local bookstores, and today I'm going to be specifically highlighting the bookstore Bookmans. If you are ever in the state of Arizona in the US, definitely try to set aside time to go to Bookmans. They have a lot of different locations, they're enormous, and they sell not just books, which is usually the thing that I'm talking about in relation to Bookmans, but they also sell manga, anime, DVDs, VHS, instruments. Then they also have video games, board games. They have pretty much anything you can think of, and they have it so that you can use store credit to buy anything in the store. It's not like it's divided up by section. If you bring in books, you can only use that credit for books. Whatever you bring in and you get credit for, you can use on anything in the store. I have done a come book shopping with me with Bookmans before, but I was more so highlighting their selection of books. This time I really wanna highlight a lot of the other things that I just mentioned and specifically the manga. I also want, if you don't mind, to let me know because you are you are gonna get a lot of shots of a lot of their manga selection. If you see any manga that they have that you're like, I can't believe they have that, you need to go get that, <laughs> let me know because I, I want to know what hidden gems are on their shelves that I'm just not aware are there. So if you see any, let me know and I'd be happy to try to find them again the next time I go in. All that said, let's jump into the bookstore tour, come manga shopping with me portion of this and then we'll get into what I got. I did end up getting quite a bit of manga, but I'm going to start with what I got from the movie anime section of the store. I bought a bunch of Studio Ghibli. I have seen a couple of Studio Ghibli movies when I was a really little kid, and I don't remember them at all. I remember Kiki's Delivery Service probably the best, but then I also just haven't seen a lot of the other ones. I definitely have never seen Howl's Moving Castle, they had the Blu-ray edition of it. And I know this is based off of a book by Diana Wynne-Jones, so I think 
that I might try to read the book and watch the movie around the same time. I think that could be a lot of fun. I've heard amazing things about Howl's Moving Castle, and I'm kind of ashamed that I've never picked it up. Also, we have Spirited Away. This is one that I might have seen, but I don't think I ever saw Spirited Away. I think I need to have an entire day dedicated to just a a lot of viewing of Studio Ghibli films. The next one is Princess Mononoke. Definitely saw this. Don't remember it at all. Also, the cast is so random. I saw, I was like, Billy Bob Thornton does a voice in this movie? The only one I really remember is Kiki's Delivery Service. I remember her big bow on her head, and I remember her cat, and I remember her broomstick. So that's about it. I had to have been so young when I saw these because I usually have a pretty good memory even for things that I viewed as a kid and I don't remember these basically at all. So I'm really excited. Potential movie marathon in my future. I also am excited because I hear they're just so wholesome and you just feel so cozy when you're watching these. If you have any favorite Studio Ghibli films, let me know which one you like the most. After that, I picked up the first three volumes of Tokyo Ghoul. This is one that Sean, my husband, had started quite a while ago, and he'd read a decent amount, and he quite liked it. He just never kept going with it, but he wants to at some point. This is on my list of 23 manga to pick up in 2023. I just didn't own any of the volumes, so I figured perfect opportunity to at least grab the first three. This is one that I have heard really good things about. I probably won't start it until the fall season because it definitely seems like one that would be well suited for around October. I know one of you is going to be very happy to see this next one. I got the first volume of Doro Hodoro. I've heard this is so weird. <laughs> and I think Sean read the first volume or the first couple volumes and he liked it, but he also was saying it was very strange. This was a while ago though. So he doesn't really remember that much about it, but I've heard it's absolutely bizarre but that it's really good. The next one is one that I was really surprised that they had because I never see this anywhere, and that would be A Bright Story. So I have the first one. I actually bought the first one online from the app Pango, and then the second one I saw at Bookman's, and I was like, okay, well, it's here. So <laughs> seems like a good time to get it. These are a little on the pricier side, so it did make a pretty big dent in our store credit. And we had a lot of store credit. I don't think I've mentioned that yet, but we didn't spend any money on any of this. We have a lot of people that when they don't want their books anymore, they just give them to us and they're like, here, you can do whatever you want with these. And sometimes we keep the books they give us and sometimes we're, we go through them and we realize that maybe we have some of them or we're not really interested in them. And then we just end up kind of always having store credit. And then also I read a lot and the books that I don't end up loving or books that I'm you know, I'm like, okay, well, it's not as much of a favorite as something else, so better to take it in. Somebody else can get it for a discounted price. And I don't think I mentioned that before. The used books are discounted too, so they're even less expensive. But regardless, I do take books in quite often. So we're just in this perpetual state of store credit hood. <laughs> last, I got some of the collector's editions of Fruits Baskets. So the last time I was in, I actually found the first one and I actually replied to one of you. One of you was talking about how Fruits Baskets is one of your favorites. And I was like, well, I'm always looking for it at my local bookstore and they have other ones, but they don't have the first one. And then the next time I went in shortly after that, they had the first one. And so I got the first one. And then this time around, I went ahead and got two and three. I have said before that when I pick up a manga, I try to give a decent amount of it a go before deciding whether it's for me or not. Fruits Baskets is one that I doubt I will get to this year because I have so many other manga that are kind of a little bit higher priority, but it's one that I'm definitely really interested in. And so when I get around to it, I want to make sure that I have a couple ready to go, see what I think of it. I have heard it's a little more slice of life. I am curious if you have read Fruits Baskets and you've read Orange, how do those compare to one another? Which one do you like more? I am obviously, I think it's pretty clear, a little more invested in the fantasy or historical fiction manga, the more modern day slice of life type of manga. I tend to be a little more in the dark about and I don't know as much about. So if you have some insight that you don't mind passing on, I would love to know your thoughts on them. That's it for my come manga shopping with me. Sean did get a couple of things himself. He got some movies. He's kind of on a movie kick right now, especially with 
older movies. So recently he started watching The Godfather. So he fought the he bought The Godfather Part 2 and then he also bought Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> so he got a few things for himself. But anyway, like I said before, if there was anything on the shelves that you saw that you really think I should go back and try to try to grab, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.